Welcome to another edition of Rider Club Radio. I'm Jeff. And I'm Liam. And this is the podcast all about tokusatsu, specifically Common Rider. We're not going to watch anything we don't want to. Fuck you. <laughs> we tried it once with Ultraman. It didn't go we just, great. Yeah, neither of us had the attention span. We sat there, we, we watched Ultraman X for like one episode. We were like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. And then we just never touched it again. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with us? Also, it's still on my backlog, Ultraman X. We'll come yeah. back to it. It's still back there. Anyway, <laughs> this week we watched Kamen Rider X8 Episode 7 and Animal Sentai Juoger Episode 38. So, Liam, why don't you tell us about what happened on X8 this time? Sure. So, this time on X8, Kyria meets a new Bugster patient when he's in the hospital. He, he Remember, he got his shit beat up the other day. So he rolls over, and there's this old man and his daughter in the stall next to him. And he's a bugster patient, and he's he's like a... He owns like a factory or something? Yeah, a factory. And his daughter wants to work there for him, or works or there for him. does, already. She does okay. already. Okay, thank you for the corrections, Jeff. Thank you. Did you watch this episode? No, actually, no. <laughs> I had it on 15 times speed. Well, with the I sound mean, you off. got the gist of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they have to drag him down to the CR, because he's sick, obviously, with the Bugster virus. And they don't let Kyrie in. They say, fuck you, Kyrie. You're not a doctor. Everyone hates you. Stay out of the CR. And they start treating the patient. By which I mean... And we've start... all been there, right? <laughs> <laughs> by which I mean they start... They turn into their roly-poly level one. And start fighting the meatballs. In the room. In the room. <laughs> in the little tiny room with the bed. They fight the meatballs. So they fight these meatballs, and Kyria goes in because the director of the, the CR is an idiot and drops a binder, which keeps the door from closing. Kyria just walks in. So they fight the meatballs, and they beat the meatballs, because they change level and go to the beach. And when they come out, Kyria comes in, he's like, hey, remember when I said earlier that the fucking the guy, the fucking graphite was, was uh, Kamen Rider Genmu? Well, I lied. It's actually Dan Kuroda. And everyone's like, well, how do we know you're telling the truth, Kyrie? You lie about literally everything. And Kyrie says, no, it's real this time, I swear. <laughs> everyone's like... And he keeps giggling. He keeps looking away and going... Kick, kick, kick. <laughs> actually believe me. And everyone's like, Kyrie, fuck yourself. No one believes you. He's like, oh, I'm sad now. He's the boy... Oh, come on, guys. Life. I... I lost a friend at, during the global freeze. Uh, actually, you already told us that that was a lie. Oh, shit, did I? All right. <laughs> did I? Well, it's true. Uh, it's actually not, true this time. We see into his memories that he did actually lose a friend during the global freeze. He, he, got, like a, he got the Bugster virus and then died from an accident, is what we heard. We don't know exactly he, what the accident he is. He got the Bugster virus and he jumped off a fucking bridge. Well, he seems pretty intact. Nobody in in Japan jumps off anything and liquefies in That's television. True. They're just normal. They just land and they they get hurt. They land and they're dead. Their <laughs> spirit they hit so hard that their spirit just ejects from their body. <laughs> but their body is unharmed, of course. Of course. Of course. I uh I was going to go on a tangent, but I'll leave it. I'll save it for No, later. go ahead. I want to hear it. <sighs> there was an episode of Agito where the monster has the ability to push people through solid objects. Yeah. And there's these two ladies playing tennis on the roof of a building, and the monster pushes one of the ladies through all the all the floors, so she essentially falls the full length from uh-huh. roof to basement. And when she lands, it's just like she just like lands as if she fell from like a ten foot drop, but that she just dies. She's like ah oh, and just lands on the ground normally, but she's dead. Like she doesn't turn into a fucking tomato or anything. What do you want from this children's show, I Liam? Want, I want explosions of violence with blood and guts everywhere. I want it to be like a fucking Tarantino movie. Yeah, exactly. I want it to be. I want like, it to be like an like an Evil Dead sequel. Like a hilarious amount of violence. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> like a fucking Sam Raimi movie. So the point is, his friend is dead because he 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 told him so bluntly, "You have the game virus and you're gonna die." That his friend probably jumped off a building or ran in front of a car in a fit of hysteria or something. He he didn't even have the game disease. He was just like, I was just joking. Come back. <laughs> I was lying. Come on. Don't you know me? My character? That's what I do. <laughs> I didn't have the game disease, but my name's not actually Kyria. Doug. Uh, <laughs> so no Doug. one believes him, even though he is truly telling the truth. As far as we as the audience, though. And he, he admonishes Emu, because when Emu's talking to the old man, he says, Hey, old man, uh, you got the game sickness, you might die. I'm going to be straight with you. 
And Kiria's like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? He's going to jump off a building now. <laughs> it always happens. Trust me. <laughs> so Emily says, ah, well, you know, you're a bitch. And they go to fight the bugster. They, they go to fight the bugster that has the uh, Giri Giri Chanbara game in his head. And they fight him. And Emu is really hesitant to team up with Kiri, but he does anyways. And they defeat the bugster. And Brave shows up again, just because he feels like it. And Brave starts fighting, and Genmu starts fighting. And they fight, then they get the Bugster, and they beat the Giri, they get the Giri Giri Chanbara. And then Kiria f- uses his samurai. He uses the samurai form to fight. Are you losing like track of what the fuck you're talking about, or are you just no? I know, like, a I know exactly. Hemorrhage? I know exactly what's happening. I'm just uh, there's so many names flying into my head at once to the front okay. of my eyes. Okay, I, brain hemorrhage. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He uses the Giri Giri Chanbara like form to fight level three Genmu. He beats level three Genmu, but then Pallid pulls a trick to make it look like Pallid is Genmu and not Dan Kuroda. And now nobody trusts Kiria ever again. And they're like, Kiria, were you lying? And he's like, even though he wasn't lying, he's like, yeah, I was lying. Because he's like, fuck it. Fuck it, why he's, even bother? In his fucking memory, he's like, man, if I hadn't told the truth, this guy wouldn't have died. So I guess I'm just gonna lie about everything forever. <laughs> you never like, know. Like, I'm in line at the fucking grocery store, and I put a goddamn carton of milk up there, and the person behind the thing's like, oh, you buying some milk today? Uh, no, I'm buying orange juice. <laughs> well, if he tells him the truth that he's buying the milk, the guy might freak out and Yeah, run he'll jump off a, a building. <laughs> yeah, he'll jump off the nearest bridge he sees. Look, this is a simple mathematical problem, right? Mm. Uh, human being plus truth equals suicide. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the audience isn't. Are you a fucking coroner? Do you have an MD? <laughs> Did you go through eight years of med school? No. Shut the fuck up about Kujo. I guess Kiria right? knows about mathematics better than me. Yeah, uh, Jeff. What did you think of this episode? It's a good episode. I loved it. It was a really good episode. I really like Kiri as a character, even if he does he is dumb as fuck. Yeah, as I was watching it, I knew you were going to like it, Jeff, because it's all about his backstory. And it yeah. Has a little bit of actual... He's not just a complete dick like he seems in his first episode. He he, he, he has, has a little, reason for acting the way he does. There's which torment. is much better than just a character who's a huge fucking dickhole for no reason. Yeah, even though his reason is a little... Uh, a little weird. A little Japanesey. He's yeah. It's a little Japanese. Is how it's a little J drama. He has he has a very Japanese reason for acting the way he does. But it is good. He's he's got a little torment in his backstory. I like that. I like the torment. I like that he wears capri pants. <laughs> I like his pants. He wears he wears capri pants, no socks, uh, Hawaiian shirt, and a jacket with his arms not in it. He is extremely fashionable. That's he is. He's very fashionable. He's got the cut jeans and everything. He's very fashionable in 1999. It's the most aerodynamic look, really. <laughs> I, I think... I, I really hope that we keep this uh, this theme up of, like, every time the rider gets their level 3, we also find out a horrifying thing about their backstory. Because I really want that with Snipe. I want to I know what broke Snipe. Because it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be losing the patient. Or at least I want to know like what he feels about that. Or I want to delve into Snipe. Yeah, I know you want to know more about Snipe because he's a giant fucking prick, and you love that type of character. I like I like pricks where you can find out what makes them tick. Where they have a you like, uh, you like tick pricks. I like t- prick ticks. I like tick, tick prick ticks. Someone where you you have that horrible moment. Like where maybe you grew up as a nice guy. But then some terrible trauma changed him forever. I like that, that kind yeah. of feeling. Maybe saying. you were a nice baby, but your mom left you in a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I... <laughs> like a real good motivation like that. In, in, the, in the show, he burns his house down when he's t- like a teenager, which isn't that crazy. If you're a fucked up teenager, you might be a fire starter, and he kills his parents in yeah. a house fire. Uh... That's all I'll say on that matter. I don't want to. Sp- I'll speak no more on the Ryuki novelization tonight. I yeah. don't. I don't want to. Um, anyway, <laughs> what the fuck were we? I talking love Kiria about? as a character though because he's like, he has that shit eating grin. He, but he's uh, not just that. He's the type of like dickhead that I love, like the jokey dickhead, mm-hmm. the guy who's like making. He's just like a huge prick, but he's like really affable about it like he's really 
he, he smiles and jokes a lot. He's charismatic. He's very charismatic. That's the one. Batty. Yeah. I ran out of I ran out of fucking vocabulary words. I was ripping my word a day calendar pages off as fast as I could. And couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, effervescent uh, in the day. Uh, <laughs> I, I I have my trusty thesaurus here, so uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, he's very charismatic. He's like uh, like a quicksilver. Yeah, yeah, like he's from, like, like from Marvel comics, Mar- those Marvel shows. Yeah, uh, he's like a huge fucking prick, but he's uh, he's a funny prick. He's a funny at least prick. himself. And he like he the... entertains himself, and nobody else finds his dickheadedness entertaining <laughs> except me. I like that. I like that he's he has sort of something different from between him and uh, Brave. Because while Brave, the death of his girlfriend wasn't really his fault, and he sort of works past his trauma about it, uh, Kyria is a continually tormented soul. It, it's, it's... I would have a lot of trouble blaming myself if I was in Kyria's spot. Like, I tell this guy he has a disease, and uh, I tell him that it's, it's, it might be fatal... And so he runs and jumps in front of a city bus. Well, hang on. We don't know exactly like what we, happened. I, we could, I couldn't have just been like, hey, dude, uh, it's a disease. We might be able to treat it. We don't know exactly no, he, he what happened. he jumped in front of a yet. bus. We don't know. He maybe, maybe he said we might be able to treat it. And like, then this man took him. a fucking trip. He took a fucking plane ride to California and went to the La Brea Tar Pits, climbed over the wall, and jumped in. <laughs> To end his eternal torment with the bugster virus. You're, you're that is really, exactly what happened. Really colorful with this. <laughs> it's exactly what happened. That, uh, yeah, it must be it. Jeff is. We we predicted almost everything about X Eight so far, plot point for plot point. So there we go. It's coming. This might be true. We'll see. Everything I've said about X Eight thus far has been true. So <laughs> this episode you can count has... on that shit. This episode has that thing again that I don't like, where Emu and Kiri are going, and the whole episode's been building up to Emu and Kiri fighting this bugster, and then the camera pans over and Brave's just there, and he's like, hey guys, I'm, I'm here too, I'm also gonna fight. <laughs> Every single action scene in this in this rider show, when there's only two riders, always some third fucker has to show up and be like, hey, yo, Every- yo. Here's here's the real thing is that every rider has to appear in every episode since they've all been introduced. Fucking apparently, yeah. They have to appear in every episode. Like we we got this weird cutaway where Snipe is just fighting the other fucking bugster by himself and he loses him and he's like, oh, "I'm going to get you." And then it cuts back. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with anything. He's still going to get so him. Remember next this action figure child? <laughs> yeah, that's Purchase probably- it. That's probably why they're throwing all the riders and forms at us so goddamn early, and they'll probably slow down later because they just want to get them all out now on the toy yep. shelves. That they don't want kids it. going to Toys R Us or uh, whatever the fuck toy store there is in Japan. I don't know. Uh, they don't want kids going to Japan Toys R Us. Toys R Us. See, <laughs> and seeing like Giri Giri Chambara figure on the shelf and being like, what's that? I'm not going to buy that. I'm going to buy all these that I know. No, instead they're going to see the Giri Giri Chanbara figure on the shelf and be like, oh, it's that fucking hideous suit from the TV show. I better buy it. I better buy it. <laughs> uh, Giri Giri Chanbara is the ugliest suit on the show so far by a country mile. It is one of the ugliest suits. In all of Kamen Rider, are you postulating? Because it's just a fucking... It's it's just a fucking clusterfuck, man. You can't even tell what's going on with it. It looks like he's wearing three dumpsters. It it looks like he should be hanging on the fucking wall at Planet Hollywood. (laughs) He's got like a... He's just a bunch of memorabilia stuck together. He's got like a... He's got like two huge things on his arms and two huge things on his legs and he's his face is like sticking forward for some reason and it's yeah. got like pipes on it it looks awful it just looks dreadful it's a piece of shit yeah it's it's i know mean, the pipes maybe are supposed to be like bike exhaust pipes or something yeah it's supposed to be like bike plus samurai equals chambara form well it's ugly instead it's uh, a whatever shit we had laying around plus this base suit equals chambara form <laughs> It's like it's three, terrible. Different, three different Super Sentai monsters, and it's well, absolutely fucking terrible. I hate it. If I was if I was Emu, he catches that gashat. I would have just fucking put it on my own belt. Screw this, screw this Kyria guy. Yeah, like 
up until that point, I could have understood that Emma was just doing what was necessary in order to save the parent, uh, patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you have to work together with the guy that can turn into a motorcycle because you need a motorcycle. I yeah. get that. Uh, when he puts the Giri Giri Chanbara Gashat, we need subtitles for this fucking po- uh, podcast. When he puts <laughs> the Gashat in to the bike, I was like, why in the fuck did you do that? Yeah. Do you really trust this guy? Really? And it turns out he did. It turns out he didn't. I think that's kind of the, the point of this episode is Emu starts to trust Kyria and then Kyria fake betrays their trust. Because he has to. Because he has to. Or else Emu will fucking shoot himself in the dick to death <laughs> with a gun. Yeah, that'll, that'll happen. Absolutely. That's episode eight. <laughs> that's what you're looking for out of this series, isn't it? Like he puts a gun to his own dick and pulls the trigger and there's just a fountain of blood that sprays up into his own face. I mean, that's, yeah, I've, I've seen plenty of Kamen Rider series where that happens before, yeah. Um, I'm sure that happened on in Deno. Yeah, it happened pro- probably in Hibiki somewhere, I don't know. Yeah. The lost episode of Hibiki. That's, that's probably, like, a, more of a Showa thing. I bet Kamen Rider Stronger shot his own dick off. He did, actually. I saw that episode. Yeah. Pretty pretty weird. Put a nuclear out. reactor in there. It was there. like a, a little bunch of sparks came out. <laughs> Is there... <laughs> It was um, a really good episode. It was a very um, good episode. I, I don't know what else. I don't know. I don't have much else to say about it. I loved it. Yeah, it's all build up. It's all building up to something more substantial. I will say that uh, it seems like they're scaling Poppy Peepo Papapo down back a little bit. Yeah, uh, she Thank does God. some annoying shit in this episode, but nowhere near the amount of annoying shit that she's done in previous episodes. Just she. Stays and I appreciate in the back. that. Yeah. She she shows her face right up to the camera like once, and the rest mm. of the episode she stays pretty good. I just I like could that do only without the entire character of Poppy Peepo Papap Smear. <laughs> You're gonna have to put up with Poppy Parappa the rapper for a little bit longer. <laughs> Don't besmirch Parappa's name like that. That's true. I shouldn't. I shouldn't combine them. I I just love that they're Monster. setting up emotional character arcs for all the writers. That they uh, that we're gonna see them get resolved one by one, or maybe all at once somehow. It's not manufactured emotion either, like surface tension emotion. Like if you put too much pressure on it, you'll fall right fucking through emotion. Yeah. It's the type of emotion that you, as an audience member, can understand and see where it's going to go, see what kind of repercussions might happen, and then the fun part is seeing where they actually go. Whether it's towards where you're expecting or in an entirely different direction. And yeah, it's not really... just by the numbers fucking like fill in the blank emotional shit like in Ghost. I don't remember any emotional shit in Ghost, be it by the numbers or not. Do you remember when Ghost missed his mom suddenly? He hadn't thought about her in 18 years. <laughs> when, he, he when he her? just had a mother in the final episode. Yeah, wasn't that emotional? That was, that was such a great. Such a great scene. It's so touching. The writers and ghosts were like, the writers and ghosts were like, humans have mothers, right? <laughs> I'm pretty Maybe sure we I should have a, a mother character. Pretty sure I came out of a lady. They were like, well, you know, we're lizard people, so we're born of eggs. <laughs> uh, but humans are born of female, right? <laughs> we sh- we should have a female that which Takara was born from, and they all hit and you can feel human feelings for. <laughs> Now that we're all in agreement. And they start eating all their yens. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, what was I saying? It's just nice to have a, a little character in the writers that isn't just, like, really boring, drawn-out, melodramatic, unrealistic shit, like Ghost Head. A little bit of character that isn't just, I believe in myself. I wanna, I wanna be a good guy. You or should be a good guy, Alan. L- Maybe listen listen to the sound of my Kokoro. Listen to the voice in your Kokoro. Should you be a good guy? Oh, I want to be a good guy. No, you shouldn't be a good guy. That's uh, that's where I want to go. Way down in Kokoro. Wait. <laughs> Visits Earth sixteen times. I'm not. I'm not proud of that one. Nah. I'm, pr- I'm not. You proud shouldn't of that be. One. You shouldn't be. <laughs> you should hang up right now. Uh, anyway, it was a really good episode. 
Uh, thanks for watching the podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Uh, uh, fucking Jeff's not going to be here next week. No, I'm done forever. Good night. So why don't we hear some news? Okay, I have two news this week. <clears throat> I'm impressed. Yeah. Right, the resident news hound has finally dig, dug up a second fucking story. Actually, nothing happened. This, well, really nothing happened this week. But we got a picture of SIC Machine Chaser, if you haven't seen that. Oh, my God. Toy news, everybody. <laughs> See, you know I'm desperate because I started making toy news. All right, show me the toy. All right. Oh, what is happening with his arm? That's his uh, like spider. Of silver shit. It's the spider, I think. Oh, yeah, you got me. All right. Yeah. I never actually watched Kamen Rider fucking anything ever, so. <laughs> yeah, we sort of just bluffed our way through Drive. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I remember the a lot of the designs in Drive were done by the guy that designs the SIC figures usually, so. It translates really nicely. Yeah, the designs move over really well from regular to SIC. Yeah. I gotta say, this is probably the best looking SIC figure I've ever seen. Besides yeah. maybe the like um, Gaim ones, where yeah, the Gaim ones are good. But the thing that SIC figures always have that sort of disgusting, uh, very detailed, very veiny sort of vibe to them, and Machine Chaser like yeah. that's his whole aesthetic. So yeah, he looks... already has shit hanging all over every bit of him. Yeah, so if you take that and extend it a little bit, it works really well for the design. Yeah, it does. It's really nice looking. I wasn't expecting that. When I said that they were going to get a live reaction, I expected to just vomit all over my own keyboard. <laughs> that would have been a good one. But nope. no, I, nope. I did not. There's a couple SIC Gimes off in the corner there, too. But those aren't important. Yeah, I, I see them. No, we're talking about Machine Chaser. We're talking about Machine Chaser. It's pretty nice. Drive um, had some nice designs. Every base suit in Drive is it's great. Great. Yeah. Every upgrade to the base suit is fucking terrible. Well, Type Wild is bad. Well, there are, there are, there are ones that aren't. Like, type, uh, type Formula grew on me. I still I think it's type dumb. Formula. Loved it. Uh, and Type Trider on is really great. Cool. One of the best Final Form designs, actually, I'd say. Yeah, it's up there. I liked Dead Heat Mach. I know I'm in the minority. I you like are Mach. definitely in the minority in this podcast since my vote counts for two votes. You're no, it's I need to. My vote should not count for three fifths of a vote anymore. I don't want to do this. Why? Because I please please tell the viewing audience why you should be treated as a full human being. Because I have great taste. Uh, you just said you like Dead Heat. Yeah, I know. That proves everything against you. <laughs> no, that proves that everyone has bad taste except for me. Uh, I guess we're in fucking bizarro world. Stick that the news second news smoking. story today is there's a fucking Poppy Peepo Popo it's, goddamn gashat. It's a Poppy Peepo Popo version of the Do Re Mi Fa beat gashat. And it's got unique Poppy Peepo Popo sounds. And the way the, the way the blog... Okay, we steal all of our news from this blog that you surely you've seen. And the way the blog reads it Oren's range, it, it seems to imply that Brave is actually going to use it at some point. Maybe in like a Hyper Battle DVD. Uh, I would kill. I would literally kill it, someone. Where does it say that? Common Rider Brave will use this item to level up to his level 3 form. Common Rider Brave Beat Quest Gamer Level 3. He's never going to use now, that. <laughs> I don't know what the... Maybe they're saying... Like Common, they might be saying something like Common Rider Brave would use it if it was real or something, if it was in the show. Yeah, uh, it I will be in see. the show at some point. She'll hold it up and be like, "Buy it." <laughs> They're annoying. Poppy pop pop. Buy it. I I would kill Jeff. I'm literally brainless. <laughs> Buy it. I would kill Jeff to be able to see what this gashat looks like in action, though. To look what the fucking form is supposed to look like. Maybe we'll see it. You in would kill me for nothing. I would. I yeah. I'd, I'd pay money to for the opportunity actually to. Jesus fucking Christ. Look, no one likes Poppy Peepa Popo. No one. I'm starting to ironically like her. What? You are like a fucking teenage memer. Anything <laughs> you can ironically love. I, I ironically have a Poppy Peepa Popo uh, body pillow. In my yeah, room. ironically. I ironically he, have 30 he, posters of her. 
ironically turns the lights off and gets frisky with that fucking pillow every uh, night. Just ironically having sex yeah. with his pillow, of course. He's laughing funny. about it the whole time while he's doing it. <laughs> I'm tweeting about it and shit. Ha ha ha. This poppy people popo pillow, man. It's so dumb. Anyway, I'm so, gonna put my dick in it. So dumb. Please ignore the <laughs> hole right around the center region. That's just something. <laughs> I'm just... I'm ironically fucking it, guys. Come on now. <laughs> Not really. Jeez. Jeez, what do you think I am? Some sort of weirdo? I wonder if there's going to be other weird versions of other gachettes. Whatever they can sell, man. You know that. You know that but, shit. But can they sell a Poppy People Popo version of the Do Re Mi Fa Beat gachette is the question. That's the, the Japanese question of the evening. people love idols. Yeah, that's true. I wonder what the Japanese opinion is on Poppy. I'm really curious now. They love her. Yeah, I think you're guessing. I am guessing. I really love, would like to talk to a Japanese I don't know person. any Japanese people at all. That's same here. They're a myth to I, me. I uh, probably shouldn't be doing a podcast about Japanese culture <laughs> when I don't even know a Japanese person. But, you know, my ancestors have been doing things like this for a long time, so it's fine. <laughs> this just means no one can tell us we're wrong. They, they gotta go through Twitter. Yeah, and I don't actually pay any attention to Twitter anyway, so it doesn't That's, matter. Okay, well. <laughs> the point is, idols are huge, and I guess they wanted to put one, there's a gashat for one. This is like when there was that Onari icon, remember that? Do you think people bought that? No. Do you think people love Onari so much that they had to go out and buy the Onari icon for however many billions of yen it costs? Because it's a special edition. <laughs> Three billion yen for this Onari icon, no thanks. See, I'm not... I would say no, but I'm not sure. Sometimes Japan is hard to get a beat on. Like, if you've ever played uh, the Ace It's Atari hard to get games, a Do-Re-Mi-Fa beat on. Uh, kill me dead. If you've ever played the Ace Attorney games, you know those Phoenix Wright yes. Ace Attorney games? Yes, sir. There's a character in them called Wendy Oldbag. And yes, sir. She's an irritating old lady who shows up way too often. I hate her. In the Western fan base, everyone hates her. Because she's terrible. In the Japanese fan base, everyone loves her. She's clearly the favorite side character of the whole series. Japanese people can't get enough of her. You, you, nobody even wants to have sex with her. How could I'm, she be the favorite side character? She's just like a funny old woman to them, I guess. I don't know. There's always that type of stock character in like Japanese comedy, though. Like the old, like the middle aged old woman who's just like a huge fucking bitch. Yeah. And she's supposed to be like a joke character. Yeah. But it's too real. It's she too real up... for Americans. <laughs> she shows up way too often in the games. But once or twice is okay. Yeah. But then again, like everybody hates fucking Larry Butts. I love Larry Butts. I love Larry. Larry's great. How could you hate Larry? It's like in fucking um, Hotel Dusk. I can't remember the guy's name now. Like, the... The frizzy loser. hair dude? Yeah, the Louis? loser sidekick. Louis? Louis. Yeah, Louis. Louis. I uh, love him. I love, like, goofy-ass loser sidekicks. Yeah, I know you do. That's why I got you, buddy. Oh, I thought da, da, you... Da, 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 da. Uh. <laughs> That was you thought coolest. I was going to talk about Luigi, but no. The way you said it, that was so... Da, 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 da. That was like the dark... <laughs> the dark... Da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> that's enough for news, though. My point is, sometimes it's difficult to gauge how Japan feels about something. Yes, it is. Yeah. Especially since we don't know any Japanese people whatsoever. That's true. So... So... Let's talk about Juoger. Let's talk about Juoger. In this episode of Juoger, uh, the Juogers finally fucking learn that the Zagul brothers, the Bagul brothers, are just two, and they just keep respawning. It took them <gasps> two fucking episodes for that. But we also learn that uh, Bard was friends with a human before who got lost in Juland, and the fucking Jumans caused him to goddamn die, and then they covered it up. And that took so a, they've probably done it a million times. That took a dark turn really quick. Yes, it did. No wonder he hates Juland. When you first go to Juland, it's like, oh, so this is an amazing world, all these animal people. It's magical. And now in episode, what, 37 we're on? 38. 38? It's like, oh, actually, the Juland government is murdering humans and, and covering up. With the shadow conspiracy. Yeah, we you thought that fucking Bard was a dickhead before, but no, he's not. No, he's, he's got a pretty good fucking reason. He is 100% a good guy, and it turns out that Juland is the evil one. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's this quite a conspiracy to uncover this far into the series. That is that is great. That is fantastic. Here I was hoping that Bard was like a criminal or something. He killed a guy and he was like, oh, I hate Julian now because they tried to stop me from killing a guy. Uh, but he has a really, really good reason to, to, to no, sever the tie. He is the, he is the great hero, Bard. He is the true hero of Juoger. And he stars in a damn fine action scene in this episode. Yeah, he was. Fucking, I thought that it was going to be dumb that there were just two Juo Eagles and one of them was a recolor, but it turned out to be a really fucking cool action scene. With yeah. both of them, like, working in tandem to defeat the Zagul brothers. It's a, it's a scene where the Zagul brothers... It was awesome. They just, they just grow jetpacks for no reason, and they start flying around. Because they need around. to. Yeah, because they have to. <laughs> And they start flying around to get away from the Juogers, so both of the Juo Eagles gotta team up. A uh, Juo bird. So, oh, oh, I'm sorry. He's a bird. He's clearly not an eagle. Juo eagle and Juo bird. Juo. <laughs> How is he able to transform? Like, I mean, why does the champion symbol he has have bird powers in it when he gave his bird powers to the other champion symbol that Yamato uses? Maybe. Another eagle Juman died, put his soul into the bird cube, and then he found it? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe maybe but, it's, uh, <laughs> maybe there is no explanation. I hope there is, but... It's... Maybe it's just that, like, uh, using a champion symbol, if you're already a Juman, taps into your Juman power, regardless of whether you've given some of it or not. Maybe. And that's why they all transform into their own animal. Maybe, yeah. That could be oh, it. And he just calls himself Juo Bird because there's already a Juo Eagle and he doesn't want to be rude. But 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 when he hits the champion symbol, it says Bird. So clearly it's in the system. It's in the system. Someone programmed it. <laughs> it's, an, it's a fucking exploit. You gotta put in a Game Genie code so that you could be Juo Bird. Yeah, that's how it is. That's how you play as Green Sonic. <laughs> Did you know... That if you get Celebi and then touch it as Donkey Kong, you unlock Sonic. What? Yeah. Yes. My whole my whole worldview is ruined. Your whole What fucking... game is this in, Liam? Melee. 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 Touch it as Donkey Kong, you get Sonic. Did yeah. you know that if you fight uh, fuck just playing as Sonic, that's for losers. If you go into the one hundred the endless fucking melee match, right, against the um wireframe team. Mm-hmm. If you go and you kill 1,000 of them mm -hmm. in a row, you get to play as Sonic and Tails as a tandem team, <gasps> like the Ice Climbers. Oh my god. How has no one ever found awesome? that? fucking awesome? It's incredible. Oh, they found it all right. It's just so secret that, like, oh, well, my dad works at Nintendo, and he told me not to tell anybody. Oh, yeah. I understand. Uh, because they had to kill the last person that found it, because it was oh. such a secret. Oh, I see. They they backed now. him up towards a cliff and he fell off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that it's the stupid ass horse people that do it too. Yeah, that kind of like took a little bit of the bite out of the series. It, it takes it takes maybe the whole entire not comedy out of the series. Uh, <laughs> those horse people. I understand are... that like I understand that money's tight, right? You, yeah. you can't make duo heads for everybody. Mm. But they just went to the fucking costume shop and bought normal horse masks and put a wig on them. It's it's like the ones that you see in those vines. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh... it's the same fucking prop budget as a teenager on Vine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's enough of that. Look, the episode was fucking fantastic. I can't wait to see where it goes. Yeah, I like... I. I knew that I was going to love Bard's character the first moment he showed up. And I do. I love that he has such an attachment to humans because of the one human he made friends with. Mm-hmm. He has, he has a And he little... develops this attachment with Yamato as well, which is just just adorable. Just <laughs> He has a little arc in this episode where he decides to fight with Yamato and protect all of humanity. So yeah, it's great. He's, he's a really good character. There's, there's two things I want to point out. Okay. One... Bard says, we're all connected, huh? You sound more like him every day. Yeah. Which makes me think that Bard was friends with Yamato's dad before Yamato's dad got backed up over a cliff and fell off. Well, <laughs> do we do we know what Yamato's dad looks like? No. 
I don't think they would have shown Shimano's him. dad is probably not an eagle man. I don't think they would have shown him if that was the guy who, who fell off the cliff, if that was his dad. No. That's his just... dad wasn't a teenage boy, that's for sure. Well... Yeah, that's true. He would have he would have had to have a real fucked up life. He had this kid at like at like nineteen. I mean, we saw Yamato's mom, and she was like a normal mom aged mom. Yeah, that's true. So his dad was probably a dad aged dad. Yeah, his dad's dead as fuck too. I'm sure. For sure. But uh, uh, maybe, I'm sure that Bard knew him. Maybe he went to Jewland and died. That that's probably it. Yeah, maybe he's still in Juland. Maybe he's in like Juland prison, maybe. rotting. Oh, wouldn't maybe. that be a cool story? Maybe he's in the Juland Gulag. The, the, yeah, the Juland. Uh-huh, uh huh. I see what you fucking did there, you piece of shit. <laughs> Two. The second thing I want to point out is in the preview for the next episode, uh, your girl Sayla gets a boyfriend. Yeah, and her boyfriend is Date Akira. From Wait, Kong Rider O's. Is it Date? I didn't recognize him. Yeah, it is. Oh my god. Which is fucking amazing. <laughs> Isn't it great that Sayla finally has a boyfriend who's a good guy who's not going to turn out to be evil? Absolutely. They're yeah. going to definitely love each other forever and he's totally not going to turn out to be a plant. That's This is going to be the episode where she leaves the Georgers and just goes to live the married life. Yeah. She found She's going to get knocked girl. up and they're going to have to get shotgun married. <laughs> Uncle Mario is going to have to hold the shotgun. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Could uh. you just picture him with like a big fucking like parrot head on, hold the shotgun, going, Caw, caw! <laughs> Mary Sailor, I'll blow your brains out. <laughs> <laughs> Do the honorable thing, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That would have been a great happening. show. It's happening. It's happening, I'm yeah. just really excited to see Dante's actor back. Because he also played uh, Space Sheriff Scheider. Yeah, I remember that. Which was fun. He was it's a really sick. good movie. He was sick of Space Sheriff Scheider. Lots of S's. Space Sheriff really... Scheider. Scheider. Space Sheriff Scheider. Oh, God. <laughs> Go on. It was it was really a fucking treat to see that he's going to be in the next episode. I'm excited for that. I'm yeah. excited to see what happens with Bard, if he's going to come back. It would really fucking suck if he didn't. <laughs> we'll see. That would be such a huge, loose, oh, fucking open-ended nothingness if they just never brought it back. Nah, for sure he's going to be brought back. Just with that one line at the end, he's going to be brought back, I know. Yeah, and of course, like... The heroes have a whole new view of Julin now. Yeah, it changes the whole story on its head. It does. There is a moment in this episode that, like, I don't really remember, and I didn't really look it up afterwards. Uh, they say, oh, he was, a, he was a guardian of the champion symbol. That's why he's so strong. And then they ask Tusk if he knew him. Weren't they all guardians maybe, of the champion symbol? Maybe Tusk was... I think Tusk was there before the rest of them. I think Tusk was a guardian before they were. Mm. Or maybe his father was. I he think said, Tusk was in charge. I think I think Tusk mentioned something about his dad. Like maybe my dad knew him. Maybe Tusk's dad was a guardian, and the other ones' yeah. parents weren't guardians. I think that's it. It could be like he seemed like he was in charge as well. He was always like yelling at everybody to do a better job. So. That's true. Maybe he's like in charge, and he knows that might the be it as well. And, yeah. I could look it up. I you guess, could, but I don't know. That's too fucking. Whatever. Nuts. I love that Larry was in these. Larry? Fucking, uh, I don't have time to be looking shit up on the internet with the internet right in front of me right now <laughs> as we speak. Fuck you. <laughs> I love that Larry was in these last few episodes of them. I fucking love Larry. Larry is, Larry is one of my favorite characters in the show. I love him. Amigos! His, his constant butchering of all other languages. <laughs> Voiced by Joseph Joestar. Yeah. Always good to Which have is her amazing. Out. This is did amazing. I, uh, huh? Did I mention in this podcast yet that the, the Japanese voice for Lucio from Overwatch is Jonathan Joestar? Yeah, you yeah, did I mention did. that. Okay, we, we were talking about all the shit that voice Fucking, actor did. Yeah, I forget I said that. It doesn't fit Lucio at all. No, not in the slightest. <laughs> Sounds great, though. <laughs> uh, they, pr- they might just be completely different in Japan. Who knows? I guess. Uh, so that's all for talking about Jew Ogers. Why don't we dive bomb into some emails and tweets? Sure. Our first message is from uh, Ian, 
who has been on the show before. Mm-hmm. Well, he Mary. said, uh, marry, fuck, kill, poppy, poppy, or poppy. Marry no one, fuck no one, kill poppy. Agreed. Our next question <laughs> is from Anna, written in many a time. Thank you. Hello. Uh, she says, uh, I don't know how I'm supposed to take this message, so I'm just going to take it the worst way pro- possible. Perfect. She says, at Ryder Club Radio suddenly starts to suck like ghost levels of terrible. When's the Zet Cross spoiler cast? <laughs> Never. And how mad would Liam be if his Halloween drunk tweeting was brought up again? Thank don't, you for everything. Don't. <laughs> don't mention it on the podcast. Liam was so fucking smashed, right? Okay. He couldn't even make a not a, he couldn't even make a word in a sentence that was spelled correctly. <laughs> how do you how do you impair your own functions that badly? Whenever whenever I get hammered at a party and I come home, if I can get it if I can get access to my computer, the first thing I do is I gotta start tweeting. That's that's what I do before I go to bed. I get on there and I start tweeting. And what a dipshit. I want to, I want as many people to see it as I can, so it goes it goes to Ryder Club Radio. Oh my god. I felt like at the time when I first saw it, like no one had responded to it yet, and I thought for a second, maybe I should delete these <laughs> and save Liam some dignity. But then I thought, nah. I I am one half of Ryder Club Radio. Do you think I have a shred of dignity left? <laughs> Apparently we're ghost levels of terrible now, so we got that going for us. Uh, she she continues. Also, what do you think if Poppy was actually a good or vaccinated bugster? Like she has a more symbiotic relationship than the more parasitic regular bugsters. Just an idea that a friend and I came up with. Uh, if at any point they destroy Poppy because she's a bugster, I'm for it. <laughs> That's uh, that. Her being a bugster would make a lot more sense than her just being a video game character who could jump out of a TV. And uh, That's true. yeah, if she gets kicked, that's okay. Man, I would really love it if she got killed. Okay, I think you're going. It doesn't little... even have to be Poppy. If this... it was like the human version of Poppy, and she got hit by a truck, <laughs> you're getting a tad sadistic here, just slightly. Or if she got backed up off a cliff. <laughs> By a bunch That's of horse fine. guys and stupid yeah. Halloween horse masks. <laughs> Our next question. Okay. Uh, probably isn't a question, but it's from Copper Popper, who says, Yo, I loved your spoiler cast. Zolda is, in fact, the best. Mm-hmm. It's debatable. He's talking about last episode when he says this. Uh, but he says, at first I was mad this, at this episode because the girlfriend had a disease based on stress and didn't tell anyone, which caused her stress. But then I remembered it was five years ago, and they only figured it out a bit ago, which is also kind of dumb. But hey, I still like X-Aid. Anyway, I want plot predictions. Stupid random ones. I think that the Gashats will make things worse when they're all activated. Anyways, keep up the good work. What if all ten Gashats together opens the door to the Gamma world? That's probably the worst outcome that could possibly come out of this. (laughs) And then you get a wish. But you don't get a wish, you get murdered. And you get brought back to life by your dad's spirit. Yeah, that'd be a great show. I don't know why they haven't made anything like that yeah. so far in Kevin Why didn't they do anything like that? It's crazy. Be like a show um, about ghosts or something. What if, right? So, uh, it turns out that the end game that Dan Kuroto has, hmm. he's he's getting all the fucking gashats together so that he can bring them all into the, like, CR, right? He wants them all focused in the CR. Hmm. And then when all four r- other riders come in there, he uses the power of the ten gashats to force them butt ass naked, and they all fuck. <laughs> That's probably gonna be the finale. That's episode fifty. <laughs> they all just whip dick, and they all just <laughs> fuck immediately. What if? Okay, what if Poppy Peepa Papo is a digitalized version of Brave's girlfriend? Just, oh my god! She's just and but what time, if all the guys fucked? What if, yeah, well, what if what if they fucked and then she came out and revealed that and she was like, "Oh my god, hero, I didn't know." And then and then hero was like, "Not now, woman." <laughs> no, they're like doing a fucking conga line, pee pee to butt around the room, right? 
And then Poppy <laughs> comes in and she's like, actually, I'm your girlfriend's spirit and your girlfriend was pregnant. Uh. And and then the digital baby comes out, right? And it's Takeru as a baby. And oh, then uh, and then Poppy, Peepo Popo, and Brave go and open up a temple together. So those are our plot predictions for x uh, That's That's probably how it's going to end. But on the weekends, uh, Brave still goes back to the CR for the conga line, if you know what, what I'm saying. <laughs> what if Poppy falls into a coma and Brave has to enter a deadly Highlander-esque game to save her life? Oh my god. What if... And hear me out. What if Knight's a terrible character and I hate you? What if Knight's a terrible character and I hate you? <laughs> I guess that's true. Oh... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's my prediction. Okay. Here's my prediction for this television program. Okay. Uh, once they get all of the gashats, uh suddenly Dan Kuroto reveals that he has ten more, and they have to find all those two. Yeah, I wouldn't actually be shocked if that That happened. is That is my prediction. <laughs> what if... What if? Emu has to get a job as a tractor-trailer driver, and he gets his best friend's uh, fucking chimpanzee, and they drive across country solving mysteries. Oh, of course. It's BJ and the Bear. Oh, okay. Okay, I didn't know what you were referencing. That's a television series. So you're just making up something dumb. No, that's a a television series. What if... uh, What if Emu lost his job at the hospital and had to move in with a family and be their live-in maid? And it's called Emu in Charge. (laughs) (laughs) What if I referenced the show anyone had ever seen in the past 10 or 15 years? What if they just played Beyblades instead of fucking common writing? Yeah. They could solve a lot of their problems if they just Beybladed. Yeah, it'd be a much more peaceful solution. No one would have to get hurt. That's true. You just baby I it. mean, Genmu's already halfway there. Yeah. He's, with his he's, fucking level three. Yeah, he's got big Beyblades. I think that's all, all my predictions. That's all my predictions, too. I predict the, the show's going to be good, and we're going to enjoy it. I hope so. You know, I hope, I hope so. I hope so, too. So thanks for writing in. I think there's more to this. Hold on. Mm. P.S. Liam, I listened to the episode where you described your level 3 form, and you made the worst weapon. Point and click. A gun. No. You point and click with a gun. That's so obvious, though. God, first Jeff hated Ghost OP, and now you can't make a fantasy weapon. Never mind, this podcast is awful. <laughs> point, pointing, come on, there's already a gun guy. Guns are so shit. It's so obvious. I don't like fucking kill you. either. I don't like the gun idea either. You're off the fucking fandom. You're out. You're You're no longer a Ryder Club radio fan. Fuck off. Never gonna write a letter in this town again, kid. Hit the bricks. (laughs) Our next three emails in a row are from Zolgheim. Oh, wow. Who says, is it it just me or does uh, Chanbara Laser look dim-witted? Like, if it was, I don't know, x eight special need cousins or something. (laughs) It's in the eyes. It's in everything. He looks like he's being propped up by the suit. <laughs> he looks sleepy. falling over, yeah. He looks fucking sleepy. He's got sleepy <laughs> eyes. He looks yeah. like he's got a respirator mask on, and he's fucking falling asleep for the oral surgery. That's his CPAP, so he can sleep without dying. <laughs> All right, uh, he, his next email is a quote, Pedophilia is funny. Liam Akiyama, 2016. <laughs> Uh, Our next one is also a quote. I love how the guy whose promising gay porn career was ruined by Kamen Rider and got his face smashed in with a golf club. Liam Akiyama, 2016. (laughs) Is there a writer who's had a more... taking notes. I know. Jesus, he's taking aim at me. Is there a writer (laughs) who's had a more interesting life than Blade, honestly? Uh, Not at this point. I can't name a single one. Maybe Hiroshi Fujioka showing up as a knight wherever he wants... I think the hierarchy is Fujioka at the top, Blade a very close second, and then all the rest are just a muddle, like, far, far beneath them. I don't know. What about Super 1? He made an entire career out of fucking ruining his fans' lives with his sexual prowess. Super 1 is definitely third, but behind Blade, definitely behind Blade. Then Shin Ken Red. (laughs) Our next email... He actually, like, fucking uh, sounded it out for me. I think it's Aldave. You, you still fucked it up. Rain Aldave. Uh, he says, let me say this before we start. 
You guys are fucking cool as fuck. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Thanks. Jeff and, Jeff and Liam, I really want to ask you guys shit, but I'm scared that my question could have been discussed already on your later episodes. I wouldn't know since I'm listening to your podcast from episode one to your very recent one. Ooh. I'm currently at episode 14. It's going to be like a You're... year before he even sees this episode. <laughs> it's it's going to be way too late to be excited by the time you watch this, but hey, here we yeah, are. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Please do not stop doing this podcast. This podcast has consumed my soul. Your humor is great, your puns are awful, and your writer opinions gave me a new perspective on how I should watch the series from now on. You guys are amazing. Keep hey, up the good work. I that's... fucking love you. That's good to hear. You, you probably like this uh, podcast more than anyone. P.S. This isn't fake. <laughs> this is from the bottom of my heart. Kind of cheesy like Common Rider, but you guys are really, really, really fucking amazing and have helped me during rough times. P.P.S. This is completely not fake. <laughs> Jeff didn't write this. Jeff, so thanks for that letter, obviously not me. Do you have something to tell me? I actually added that part at the end. He didn't oh, write that. Right. <laughs> I just like that when someone says things nice about us, they always have to have that little that little caveat. Like, I'm not joking. Yeah, he actually <laughs> did write, P.S. This is not fake. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate so much. it. We're still Thank here. Thank you so much for all of that. That's probably like the first legitimately really nice email we've ever gotten. Yeah, probably. It didn't have like ones. a really mean spirited backhand <laughs> thing at the end of it. Even the nice ones <laughs> call us shits and assholes. And <laughs> <laughs> so we really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Rain Aldave. Yeah. And our last email is from Edgar. Okay. He says, What up, RCR? I've recently convinced a friend of mine to watch JoJo, and he really enjoyed it. I have now convinced him, his cousin, and a few friends to marathon all the X8 episodes so far. Ooh. How badly did I fuck up these friendships? A lot. <laughs> it really depends on uh, how much they like x Aid. If they don't get it, then you may have just alienated your only friends. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tightrope. I showed a friend of mine who is a total normie, by the way. I showed a, him... No, fucking normies! Fucking normies, I tell ya. I showed him X-Aid, because he was curious. And he liked it. He thought it was super weird, obviously. He thought it was the weirdest thing. And he laughed oh, a yeah. lot at, at, at weird shit. Like, level one, he could not stop laughing. But at the end of it, he was like, I actually want to watch more. Like, he, he'd come to me and be like, let's watch some X-Aid. So, he, yeah. Oh, wow. It, it, does, it does happen. You can do it. It's just, you yeah, be... it sometimes it does happen. Like, like I said, I got all of my friends into Common Rider. Yeah, it's 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 a risky to game. varying degrees. There yeah. was there was one guy who literally just completely refused. He wouldn't have anything to do with it. and He hated every time we ever talked about it. <laughs> and uh, Godspeed to him wherever he is now. Have fun, dude. Have fun not <laughs> listening to this fucking great boss ass podcast. Yeah, the best podcast on the internet, motherfucker. Yeah, we, we just... That last email just completely went to our heads. It's fucked from here on. <laughs> we're gonna turn into huge assholes. Yeah, we think we're the best now. <laughs> uh, this podcast... The podcast is cool as always. Can't wait to listen to you guys jizz over x Aid and Juojo while I play the Pokemans. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that came out, didn't we it? We haven't said a mean thing about a show in a long time, actually. Like a no, legitimately it's, hurtful thing. This, Disgusting positivity has given me a goddamn cavity. Yeah, it's sad. I guess Pokemans did come out, didn't it? Yes, Sun and Moon. I haven't finished a Pokemon game since Fire Red. You didn't play X or Y? I did, I didn't finish it. Oh, I finished it. I, there's there's no post game. I don't know, I don't know, man. My drive for Pokemon, when I was younger, I was like, I'm gonna be a fucking Pokemon master! <laughs> I had a weird accent when I was a kid. Yeah, you yeah. But I was... I was, like, set on it, man. I played every game through, like, six times. I would Jeez. transfer over my favorite Pokemans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would go through whatever stupid rigmarole you had to go through <laughs> to get a Pokemon onto the fucking Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Uh, but I couldn't even finish X or Y. I had X. I had, yeah, I had X too. I, I played um, Red, Pokemon Red, with... Uh, a beastly fervor. I know practically... I could skip all the text in that game and still know exactly where to go at all times. Yeah, it's funny. I had blue. Did you? You had the bad yeah. version. 
Fuck your dick. <laughs> what, what was your starter Pokemon? Charmander. I had Squirtle. Oh, fuck, fuck you, off. motherfucker. You <laughs> How stereotypical was that, though? Like, you had the red version in Charmander, and I had the blue version in Squirtle. Yeah, it's weird. I never played a Pokemon game with such fervor as I did red. I played uh, Platinum, and yeah. I really liked it. I liked Platinum a lot, but I just didn't dive into it as hard. I guess I was just older and shit and i like to i don't X. know man like i played i feel like i played gold a hell of a lot more than i played blue like i played blue with a ridiculous fervor until gold came out mm-hmm. i was so fucking hyped for uh, like the 150 new pokemon yeah and i just dove head first into that shit and played it forever yeah i played uh soul silver i missed gen 2 but i played soul silver i played the remake way later uh, the remake's the remake's pretty good. They're I great. play Heart Gold. Yeah, I thought. Oh, it turns wow. out that we're just the opposite on everything. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Which oh. did you have, Diamond or Pearl? Diamond, obviously. I I had Diamond as well. Actually. Okay, all right. It fucks it up. Yeah, well, and we both had X, so. Yeah, I guess know. we used to be different, but now we're the same guy. That's the disc- I never want to be the same as you. I just want you to know that we're li- we're like brothers, but closer. Oh my god. So thanks for tuning in to Rider Club Radio this week, everybody. If you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to us at riderclubradio at gmail.com. And that wasn't an edit, by the way. When I started talking about this, I just fucking segged right into it. Just flew right in there. Or you can send us a tweet or follow us on Twitter or retweet or look at our Twitter at Rider Club Radio. Uh, there's a lot of amazing things on there. A lot of nice gifts. Yeah. If you like funny fucking screen caps, Liam has you well within his wheelhouse. I got you on lockdown if you like stupid Juodra screen caps. Yeah, every Juodra episode, there's at least one new screen cap on our fucking Twitter. <laughs> Lately, yeah. They're just, they're just gold mines for screen caps. They really are. If you love fucking horse heads, you know where to go. <laughs> So follow oh. us on Twitter and send us an email, and uh, we'll talk about your email on this podcast. What else are we going to do? Talk about... Georgia. So see ya. Okay, good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>